Hello everyone. Welcome to this integrated session. In this integrated MCQ discussion, uh, we have taken up one of the important metabolic disorders, which is very frequently asked, not only in NEET PG exam, but also in INI CET exam, you will find almost every alternate year some question being asked. So let us first have a question and uh, myself, Dr. Sandeep Sharma, I am here as a pediatrician to help you, but any metabolic error, uh, you cannot, you know, make understand or make the diagnosis unless you have a biochemistry component uh, being elaborated and so for that we have uh, Dr. Nilesh Chandra, the biochemistry expert with us. So let us first have a look at the question and then proceed further. So the question says, a child who was normal at birth developed chronic liver failure and muscle weakness at 3 months of age. On investigation, his serum glucose was low and there was ketoacidosis, AST, ALT were slightly raised, uric acid blood lactate levels were normal, IV glucagon test was done after we meals. It rose the blood glucose uh, showed a rise, but when it was given in fasting state, there was no improvement in blood glucose. Liver biopsy revealed increased glycogen deposition in the liver. What is the likely enzyme deficiency? So by this time, you would already know that this is a child who was normal at birth. He is having a chronic liver failure, right? He is having muscle involvement and he is having a liver biopsy showing increased glycogen. So what we are looking at is a glycogen storage disorder. If you look at the four options, they are also talking about glycogen storage diseases. So before we go into the details, you should know that glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency is mainly related to type 1 glycogen storage disease, also called as von Gerke disease. Your muscle phosphorylase is type 5, branching enzyme is type 4 and debranching enzyme is type 3. The alternative names you already know, so I am not going to repeat them. So the question arises, what exactly are we talking about? So muscle phosphorylase will be ruled out here. This cannot be the likely answer because muscle phosphorylase is mainly related with uh, muscle related problems. You will not have liver related problems to be a predominant symptom in these patients. Again, type 4 variety is the one. If you have a question on type 4, these are the children who will have milder episodes of hypoglycemia. They will have failure to thrive. They will have severe hepatosplenomegaly which will be mentioned and they all die of cirrhosis. Cirrhosis, micronodular cirrhosis is very common. None of these points are mentioned and so it is less likely to be type 4 as well. What we are left with is type 1 and type 3. Both of them can show liver and muscle involvement. Both of them can show hypoglycemia and both of them to distinguish sometimes we do a test called as IV glucagon test which has been mentioned here. So, the distinguishing point between them is very simple. In patient of type 1 disease, that is von Gerke disease, when you give IV glucagon, there is no effect on the blood glucose levels. On the other hand, in type 3 disease, if you give IV glucagon, if the patient has just taken meals, like 2 hours post meal, there will be a rise in blood glucose. If the patient has been fasting for 8 hours and you give IV glucagon, no effect will be seen. And if you look, this is the clinching point in this question. Another supporting, so this is more in favor of type 3 disease, that is debranching enzyme deficiency. Also, if you look at the AST and ALT levels, AST and ALT elevation is significantly more common in type 3 disease where they are as normal in patients of type 1 disease. Type 1 will have hyperuricemia, gout-like presentation, which is not mentioned here. They will have ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis more common. Here it is not mentioned here. So, for all practical purpose, it is not glucose 6-phosphatase. The answer to this question is D, that is D-branching enzyme deficiency. The diagnosis is type 3 glycogen storage disorders. There are a few points about these two distinguishing things that you need to remember for future. So, on how to distinguish between type 1 glycogen storage disease and type 3 glycogen storage disease. There are three or four points which are very important and they will help you whenever you get confused. First of all, type 1 GST, the liver involvement, muscle involvement can happen in both. Type 1 renomegaly is often present. So, enlargement of kidneys is a frequent feature. Type 3 renomegaly is not seen. So, there is no renomegaly in these patients. Secondly, AST and ALT levels are found to be normal in type 1. Whereas type 3 will show elevation in the AST as well as ALT levels. Third, if you look at the uric acid levels as well as lactate levels, they will be elevated in patients of 
type 1 glycogen storage disease whereas these will be relatively normal in patients of type 3 disease and then you have a test called as IV glucagon test when you give IV glucagon in these patients irrespective of the meal status of the child there will be no effect on blood glucose whereas in type 3 patient when you give IV glucagon you will have two scenarios in case the patient has been fasting when we say fasting patient we always take eight hours as the cutoff so in a fasting patient there will be no effect on blood glucose but if you give it post meal anything which is post meal we always take a duration of about two hours after a meal you will find that there will be a rise in blood glucose and this is a test that we use to distinguish between type 1 and type 3 obviously you can go in for biopsy you can go in for molecular analysis but in a clinical setting these are the things that help you in reaching the correct answer now related to the biochemical aspects of these diseases and what exactly is happening and what are the key points related to biochemistry that you need to know i hand it over to sir who will be taking it from you. so you have already given most of the details which can help the student to distinguish and identify the two main uh, gsts which are being asked in the exam that is type 1 and type 3 mostly the the examiner will try to confuse the student between the type 1 and type 3 so i'll take them up one by one starting with the gsd type 1 where you've already mentioned that the glucose 6 phosphatase this is the enzyme which is deficient glucose 6 phosphatase the enzyme which is going to be deficient what the students have to remember here is that glucose 6 phosphatase is actually participating in two different pathways one when we are doing the glycogen breakdown Hmm. when we are doing the glycogenolysis in the last step conversion of glucose 6 phosphate to glucose that will be done by glucose 6 phosphatase mm -hmm. second when you are doing the gluconeogenesis mm -hmm. there also the last step is the same the conversion of glucose 6 phosphate to glucose mm -hmm. and these are the two main mechanisms by which the blood glucose level is maintained okay so if the glucose 6 phosphatase is not there hmm. then in the fasting state the two ways through which we generate the blood glucose mm -hmm. the glycogenolysis and the gluconeogenesis both of them are affected okay that is why in gst1 deficiency we have very severe hypoglycemia and it is so severe that when the hypoglycemia is there and the individual will do some exercise mm -hmm. there will be fainting episode so this is one very important identifying feature which the students can use if the question mentions that there is fainting episode. So, Immediately you have to think about GSD type 1 because a very severe hypoglycemia is there. Both the pathways are getting affected. So uh, there is no mechanism to generate the glucose and uh, after fasting state glucose will keep falling. Whatever energy is coming from fatty acid only that is available and we will have the fainting episode. Second. Because the glucose 6 phosphatase is not there, the glucose 6 phosphate will accumulate. And you know that glucose 6 phosphate will go to the HMP shunt. From mm -hmm. HMP shunt, it will promote the synthesis of purine mm -hmm. and pyrimidine. Mm -hmm. Purine pyrimidine doesn't get stored in the body. If you make excess of purine pyrimidine, it will get degraded. Mm -hmm. And we know the very important degradation end product from the purines is the uric acid. acid. So this is the mechanism by which the hyperuricemia mm -hmm. is occurring in the GSD1. So two things fainting episode and the hyperuricemia these two if it is mentioned in the question of a glycogen storage disorder only one possibility is there we are looking at the gsd type 1 mm -hmm. blindly the student can mark the answer as gsd type 1 if these two things are mentioned in a case of the glycogen storage disorder yes. now let's go to the gsd type 3 in gsd type 3 the enzyme which is deficient here like you said is the D branching enzyme now the students have to remember what is the function of the D branching enzyme you know that the glycogen is a branched molecule so the ch straight chain will have the alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond right but wherever the branching is there at the branch side we have alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond and this is where the D branching enzyme is going to act but the debranching enzyme is not affected all right no effect by glucagon the glucagon has action only on two enzymes in the glycogen metabolism one is the glycogen synthase which is inhibited mm -hmm. second is the glycogen phosphorylase which is activated mm -hmm. so here the problem is in the debranching enzyme the glycogen phosphorylase cannot act till this branch is resolved because it is acting on the 1,4 linkage. Mm -hmm. 
so first we have to resolve this only then the subsequent one four linkages can be broken hmm. so now this branch site will become the stumbling point when there is fasting so what will happen the long chain will keep getting broken down by the phosphorylase mm -hmm. and finally you will end up with the branch site this branch site has to be resolved by the debranching enzyme mm -hmm. but debranching enzyme is not there or it is very less mm -hmm. so if you give the glucagon it is not able to push the debranching enzyme to do more work mm -hmm. that is why in the fasting state when you give the glucagon in these patients mm -hmm. no benefit but in the fed state the chain is long okay the phosphorylase will get activated okay it will break the chain and extra glucose will be released okay in gst1 you give the enzyme glucagon no action on the glucose 6 phosphatase yeah. so even if small amount of enzyme is there it cannot be pushed to do more work mm -hmm. so this is the underlying basis why in the gst type 1 and in gst type 3 in the fasting mm -hmm. state if you give the glucagon there is no benefit mm -hmm. but in the fed state when you give the glucagon mm -hmm. the long chain can be broken down by the phosphorylase which is under the influence of the glucagon and then we see that there is increase in the blood glucose level so this is how we can identify and understand the underlying differences one extra point which i can mention here is that in the deficiency of the debranching enzyme what will happen every time there is a fed fast cycle in the fasting state we will have the branch sites and beyond that the cleavage of the glucagon the glycogen will not occur so we have lot of branches and then when the individual will feed more branches will be created in the next fasting state the branches cannot be broken down mm -hmm. the chain will become short it will stop at the branch site and in the next fed cycle more branches will increase mm -hmm. so when you look at the glycogen in this case you find it is highly branched glycogen so sometimes in the question it will be mentioned that highly branched glycogen is there which resembles molecules known as limited dextrin so if the question mentions limited dextrin like deposits are there immediately again you can close your eyes and mark that this is the gst type 3 so these are some points by which we can quickly take the hint from the question don't spend lot of time identify these catch points and straight away distinguish between gst type 1 and type 3 that is why being good in biochemistry and physiology subjects is so important for you to you know understand the clinical aspects you can always remember the reason that why uh, okay you are giving iv glucagon and this is happening but if you know the reason behind it you don't need to cram these up and uh, truly sir it has been a enlightening experience not only for me but also for students to understand the concept behind it it's a very frequently asked thing and it is just a matter of time before they ask you the reason for why iv glucagon does so it has been asked in aims it has been asked in neat pg in the past the next step in evolution next step as well as next step you know the meaning i think they are going to ask this and when you if you understand it only then you will be able to mark the appropriate answer so listen to this video at least twice because in one go you may miss out on a few points add it to your existing notes i hope you will benefit from this session i'm sure they'll benefit from this session you have wonderfully given the clinical distinction between all the points that they have to remember between the gst 1 and 3 and i hope that this uh, conceptual uh, understanding for the reasons will help them to remember how to quickly identify gst 1 correct, and type 3 correct sir hopefully students will yes. get so, benefit best of luck and stay tuned thank you thank you very much